Father. All right, let's go ahead and stand. Take your hands and turn to 38. 38. Father God, Lord, as we come together tonight uh, to gather, um, to take an opportunity uh, to pray and to praise your name, uh, to hear your word, Father God, we want to come before you and, and thank you that you are a great God and that you're not just a, a great God, that you're a great God who cares, who loves us, and who's involved in the things of our daily lives. Lord, help us uh, as we come together um, to pray, to know how to pray um, so that we can praise your name when you answer the prayers. Father, uh, help us to uh, be able to put aside the cares of the week and things we need to do tomorrow to hear what, uh, what you have to say to us through your word. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, you may be seated. And take your handles one more time and turn to 566. 566. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more And the morning breaks eternal bright and fair When the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there When the roll is called up yonder When the roll is called up yonder When the On that 
that bright and cloudless morning when the dead in Christ shall rise and the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the skies and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun let us talk of all his wondrous love and care then when all of life is over and our work on earth is done and the roll is called up yonder I'll be there when the roll songs when the roll is called up yonder I'll be there hope you're having a good day today this is a good day for me is my wife's birthday happy birthday to Miss Debbie today is her birthday she's 29 and so good to have her with us tonight this is a letter from uh, Daniel and Hannah Bach uh, missionaries to Sri Lanka Greetings in Jesus' precious name. Thank you for faithfully standing with us in the ministry of Christ. Your sacrificial giving, faithful prayers for God's servants during these trying times are a testimony of God's grace. We have greatly missed being on the field, but God has given us a blessed time in the USA. Remember, they had to come back here to get um, the vaccine. The past five weeks have been filled with family time, travel, and ministry. At first, planning a trip back to the USA to get our mandatory vaccine seemed like a stressful and unwelcome turn of events. However, we have found peace resting in the fact that this short trip back was the perfect will of God for us. God has used this time in so many ways to strengthen and equip us for the road ahead. We didn't schedule meetings with any churches ahead of our trip except for making plans to attend a fellowship meeting at Faith Baptist Church in Chelsea, Michigan. However, God has given multiple unexpected opportunities to preach and minister to several churches in Texas, Mississippi, Tennessee, and Michigan. We were especially glad for the opportunity to be at our home church in Tennessee for about 11 days. Please pray for our pastor's wife, Mrs. Combs, as she became seriously ill recently and was in the hospital for several days. Though she is home recovering, she needs strength and healing. God has blessed us by giving us fellow laborers to work and fellowship with on the field. During this time in the USA, we met up with a whole Sri Lanka missionary team twice as the Lord miraculously brought us all together on two separate occasions. The Sorel and the Gurley families arrived in Sri Lanka last week. We are so excited to rejoin them soon. God has led each of us to focus on reaching the Tamil speaking people in the northern part of Sri Lanka. We believe that God is planning to do some amazing things for his glory. Please pray for the whole team. We are scheduled to fly back to Sri Lanka this coming Thursday, October 21st. That is tomorrow, right? Please continue to pray for us as we make the adjustment back to the field. Upon arrival, we plan to apply for our visa extensions <coughs> and a driver's license. Please pray that all will go well. We also need God's special help with resuming our study of the Tamil language. We have canceled our USA phone numbers uh, and so forth. If you have an iPhone, you can call through FaceTime audio or iMessage us, and on that goes there. So again, he says, be in prayer for them. They're leaving tomorrow, going back to Sri Lanka. So be in prayer for the uh, Bach family, all right? And also uh, the other missionaries as well in our faith promise. All right, let's pray. Father, thank you for um, the way that you're working in the Bach family there here in the States trying to go back to Sri Lanka. We pray that all that would go well, that they'd be able to get on the plane, head on back, and have no issues. We also pray for that vaccine that would not have any uh, repercussions for them, Lord. We know that there are many um, placebos that are given out as well, and so we pray that that would be the case for them and all of our missionaries who may have to take that thing. We just pray that you would bless and watch over them 
and protect them uh, from the issues that can be found therein. We pray that you bless their ministry team as they are working together with another team. We pray you bless them as well. Thank you for loving us. We pray that you bless our time now. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, let's take our Bibles and go to the book of Proverbs tonight. Proverbs chapter 3 is where I would like us to go. And it has been an eventful week already. A lot happening these days, that's for sure. Proverbs 3, I want to read two verses to begin with. And let's go ahead and read those. Let's read them together. Okay, you got your Bibles? Read them with me. Here we go. Proverbs 3, and it's going to be 25 and 26. Let's read them together. Ready? Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Let me say that again. Follow along now. Verse 25. Be not afraid of sudden fear neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. Interesting, isn't it? Why would he say that? What are these verses all about? You know, I, I remember hearing the speech of a former uh, Navy SEAL. He was giving a speech. He was the keynote speaker in 2015 at a lacrosse convention in Baltimore. He was an all-American defenseman as a lacrosseman at Syracuse. But he also was a 13-year veteran Navy SEAL. And so they invited him to come back to his alma mater and speak. And so he had learned some valuable lessons as a Navy SEAL. And the title of his speech was called, Calm is Courageous. Calm is courageous. And so he told this story. His name was Master Chief Denver. He told the story of his final training exercise as a Navy SEAL, where students in training have to plan, organize, and execute a mission, all, quote, under the watchful eye of the lunatic Navy SEAL instructor, unquote. His team was behind the clock, and they were in trouble. He recounts how his ranking officer, also a student in training, was, quote, screaming his head off like the Tasmanian devil, unquote. And he goes on, the fevered pitch level of everyone's behavior was just unsustainable. Amidst the chaos, the master chief petty officer, the senior ranking enlisted man in the United States Navy, who Denver said is a basic training, quote, unquote, God, came over and told all the officers to gather together, and he told them these words, quote, As officers, at a minimum, the boys are going to mimic your behavior. In our line of work, based on our personalities, they're probably going to amplify your behavior. Athletes are the exact same way. As leaders, as captains, as officers, if you keep your head, they'll keep their head. If you keep it together, they will keep it together. If you lose it, they will lose it. So I'm going to share with you the best thing I learned as a master chief. When I was a new guy, I learned it from a master chief in Vietnam. Calm is courageous, or excuse me, contagious. Calm is contagious. And as he walked away, Commander Denver heard him say, quote, because if you keep your head in our line of work, you keep your head. Good thoughts, isn't it? I want to give you some thoughts out of this passage of Scripture about being calm in the time of chaos. Calm in a time of chaos. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the opportunity to share a few thoughts tonight from the Word of God. Help us, Father, to draw strength from your Word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 
So, Pastor, why are we discussing being calm in the chaos? Well, for many reasons. We can say because there are chaotic times in your life when you need, as a leader, whether you are a mom in the midst of a chaotic family issue, when the toilet overflows and everything's going crazy, the kids will go crazy if you're going crazy. If you're calm, they'll be calm. Or if you're at work and everything is going haywire at work, if you're calm, everybody else will be calm, especially if you are the leader. If you're the dad in a family, if you are a pastor of a church, wherever you are, if you're calm and you are the one people are watching, it's contagious. And I want to encourage you to be calm in the midst of chaos. How do we find peace in the storm? How do we find calm in chaos? Why even discuss it? Well, let me give you some thoughts here. The indicators point to some major problems that are coming up in our country and the world in the next few months. I do not know if they will happen, but there are indicators that many people are saying are pointing to some things that are going to happen. It can cause chaos. For instance, in our natural world, we know that volcanic activity right now is increasing around the world. There are five active ones right now. Honolulu is already going off. La Palma is going off. There's some others that are going off as well. And they're all moving and everyone's thinking, what is going on? Something is happening when it comes to the natural volcanic activity. Earthquakes as well around those volcanoes, but also in other parts of the world as well. People hearing these great booms and the earth shaking. This happened here in Florida this last month. What's going on in our world? We're definitely seeing more natural uh, activity. Space, we keep being told about the different uh, debris that is coming. Actually, this morning in Trenton, New Jersey, I saw a video of a meteor shooting across the sky. Huge fireball in Trenton this morning. There's more of that happening now. We're hearing more and more of that as we get closer to these last days. Geopolitical. China. What are they doing? North Korea just tested some missiles today. Again, what's going on? The pandemic, of course, right? The pandemic. All that going on. And the vaccine now being pushed upon the world. Shortages of goods piling up in cargo containers in the major ports of our nation. A man by the name of Wally Edemayo, he is the treasurer department for Biden. He actually is the, the leading treasury uh, spokesperson for uh, the Department of Treasury for Joe Biden. He said on ABC News, I watched the video of it. He basically said the shortages will continue until the country is completely vaccinated. Now let that sink in just for a minute. Does it sound like something that's being planned? They say, what's the reason why all these things are piling up in these ports? He says, well, there's many reasons. But he said, let me just tell you this, though. These shortages will continue until the country is completely vaccinated. Even the world must get the vaccine, he says. I also understand that the polar vortex in the North, this coming winter, is disrupted. When there's a, a stable polar vortex, it's cold, but not that cold down here. Now, this year, it is disrupted. Scientists are saying the polar vortex is now going to be wobbling, and it will cause a much colder winter for much of the United States. What happened to Texas last year? Remember that? Remember all of the issues with that? People died because of that. I also understand that the bunker building industry, the emergency bunker building industry has been super busy. They're saying they've never had a better year than this year in the United States. Why are these elite people with the millions of dollars ordering bunkers to be built in these caves and underground? What's going on? What's coming? And we've been talking about this over and over again, that we are in these last days. We know there's shortages already in the stores. My wife, I told her after Sunday, I said, listen, go buy some toilet paper. And she went to Sam's and there was none, all gone. She finally was able to find some and she bought everything that she could, at least had money for, and we loaded up on more toilet paper, but it's going to get harder and harder to find it. 
Food shortages are coming. We've already been told that by the Treasury Department and other people in America today. Gas prices are rising and getting scarce. I showed a video to Brother Mowers just a moment ago about a, a tanker truck driver who was ordered by the government to literally dump his crude oil on a country road owned by the government. Dump it on the road. Why? You tell me. Why are we just getting rid of oil, crude oil, that could be used for gas when the gas prices are going up? The vaccine push, on and on it goes. And so we're right on the very beginning of chaos, it seems, doesn't it? <clears throat> what will happen? And as believers in a sovereign God, I find myself more and more praying for wisdom and grace that God would give me peace in the midst of chaos. And as believers, we should be the example. When there's a run on the store or people are screaming and hollering because of something's happening, we should be the ones that have our head because calm is contagious. Especially you dads to your children. Especially pastors to our church. We are calm. We are not worried. We know what God is doing. So let me give you some thoughts from this passage of Scripture. Proverbs chapter 3, look at verse, we looked at verse 20, 25 and 26 again. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence and shall keep thy foot from being taken. First of all, number one, how do we have calm in the chaos? Number one, preparation. Preparation. Notice verse 21. He says, My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. Verse 22, So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. Meaning you'll have calmness and peace, life in your soul, if you keep them. What is he talking about them? Go back to verse 13. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. You know what's going on. He goes all the way down through there. Verse 19, talking about that wisdom. The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding, He hath established the heavens. By His knowledge, the depths are broken up. See, we, are, we find calm in the midst of chaos when we are prepared. When we have wisdom and understanding. And that's why I research a lot. I try to stay up on the news. I try to go through a lot of it. It drives me crazy sometimes. But I don't want to be caught with my head in the sand. I don't want to be caught, you know, you, we, you, we're, we're so, so easy to binge a Netflix or binge a program and, and be involved with video games so much that it's all, you know, you spend your time doing that and they want you to do that so that they can do and continue on with their plan that's going on out there around our world. And I don't want to be, one, caught unprepared. I want to be prepared. I want to have wisdom. I want to have understanding. You know, and I found this to be true in my life. When you plan for the worst, you're calm in the chaos. When you've already planned it, you've already figured out. And by the way, the Navy SEALs do this. They literally do that. That's why a lot of the times when you see these men that are training in basic training, they're, they, they are on their hands and knees or on their belly through the mud under barbed wire where there's ammunition, machine gun fire firing over their heads. My dad, I don't know if they still do that, but when my dad was in boot camp, it was live fire. And you were under there. You didn't lift your head. Why? I teach you this is what it's going to be like. Blowing up the, the, uh, the grenades and all of that so you can hear what it sounds like when your ears pop and you can't even hear anybody else. They train you. At least then they did like that. Why? So that you would know what's going on. You plan for the worst. What's going to happen when the guy next to you gets shot and the guy over here gets shot and there's body parts everywhere? What are you going to do? They plan for that. They're calm. Bullets flying. Bombs going off and they're walking like this. They know exactly because they've planned it. They know what's going on. You plan and prepare. And now in our chaos that we know is coming according to the Word of God, we, are, we understand and we have wisdom and we're ready for that. And that's why we try as best we can as leaders, as family, as a pastor, as men, to be prepared for what could be coming. 
Live your life normally. Enjoy your life. My wife, uh, you know, the kids got together on Monday night and had a little birthday party celebration for Debbie and gave her a gift card. They all pooled their money together and gave her $200 on a gift card. She went out today and did some shopping and bought some stuff that she'd like to have. She told me later as I got talking to her about different things, and she said, man, maybe I should have just spent all that money on food prep and stuff like that. And I said, no. I said, listen, we're, we are preparing, but you have to enjoy your life. God wants you to continue to enjoy your life. Live your life. Enjoy your life, but always be thinking, i got to be prepared too. And so we try to be prepared. Let me show you something. You're in Proverbs. Go, turn back to Psalm 91. I love this passage of Scripture. It gives me so much comfort. And I have referenced it several times in my life. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, and Him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Did you know George Washington, as a believer, we understand, when he was fighting in the French and Indian War, this is all before the Revolutionary War, an Indian actually said when he was fighting against George Washington, I leveled my, my firearm right at that man sitting high on his horse, and I shot, and I know he should have fallen. Some reports say that when George Washington actually opened up his jacket, there were musket balls that fell out of his jacket. Never penetrated it. Think about Psalm 91. He'll cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust Truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day. General Stonewall da Jackson was always... Why do they call him Stonewall Jackson? Because he would stand in the middle of battle like a stone wall. He would stand up and command his men when they were all, everybody else was on their bellies and running, and he would be, come on, man, and he would stand up right in the midst of a battle like a stone wall. He knew God. And he would say, if I'm to die today, I'm to die today, but I'm not going to fear. I'm going to fight, and I'm going to carry my men through this battle. And that was General Stonewall Jackson. Was not shot in battle. Did you know that? He wasn't killed in a major battle like that. Not for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Guys, listen. You make God your habitation. You make Him your refuge. You allow Him to lead and guide you, you will not fear. Prepare, prepare, prepare. Yes, get your stuff together. Make sure you have storable food. Yes, you got ammo. Yes, you got all the stuff that you need. And you should prepare all that. And when you're prepared, certainly that gives you calmness because you're ready. You don't have to worry about fighting over a bag of Cheetos in the middle of a Walmart parking lot because it's the last one around and you have no food. No, you have food. You've got it ready. Matter of fact, you go back to your house and your wife is making bean soup. She's making something else that tastes really good and you're going to have a nutritious meal in the midst when everyone else has any food. Why? Because you prepared. Calm in the middle of chaos. See how it works? Wisdom, understanding, preparation, and trusting your God and God will bring all of these things to pass and He'll give you grace. So number one, preparation. Number two, passion. Look at verse 24. Back to Proverbs chapter 3. Passion. After he says that you'll have life unto your soul and grace to your neck, you'll walk in thy way and will not stumble. Verse 24, when thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down and your sleep shall be sweet. I hope that you 
lay down at night without worry or care. If not, you need to learn this lesson. In the midst of chaos, you can lay down and be totally asleep. You know that? I remember, and I don't know if this is true or not, but I remember seeing the movie Gods and Generals talking about Stonewall Jackson. I think at one point he was actually taking a nap on a battlefield in between the battle under a tree. How could he sleep? The sweet peace of our Lord. When he is your habitation, the passion of the Lord allows you to have that peace. And so we find in verse 24 again, When thou liest down, thou shalt not be afraid. Yea, thou shalt lie down, and thy sleep shall be sweet. Be not afraid of sudden fear, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. For the Lord shall be thy confidence. The passion that you have for your Lord will be your confidence and shall keep your foot from being taken. That is the passion of God. He will give you that sleep. We see the preparation Calm in the chaos. Passion for the Lord will give you peace in the midst of the storm. Then number three, purpose. Why should we have calm in the chaos? Like the Master Chief said, calm is contagious. We want to be a help to people. We don't want your family freaking out. We don't want the church going hysterical. You be the calm. It's contagious. It's okay. We've got it under control. Because we're prepared. We have a passion for our Lord. And we have a purpose. Look at verse 27. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due, when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. You know, when we are prepared and we are ready and we know that things are going to go bad... The purpose that we should have also is to help others. Withhold not good. Withhold not good from them to whom it is due when it is in the power of thine hand to do it. You've got goods. You've got supplies. It's all mine and we prepared so you're out of luck, dude. No. God wants us to be loving and kind even as Jesus was as well. Verse 28, say not unto thy neighbor, go and come again, and tomorrow I'll give thee when you have it right there by you. It's almost like this passage was written for what we're going through right now, isn't it? Devise not evil against thy neighbor, seeing he dwelleth securely by thee. There are going to be people all around us, I believe, that is going to be hurting and scared and full of chaos, but we will be calm in the midst of of chaos because of our preparation because of our passion and the fact that we have a purpose to glorify and honor God in these last days we will be having a men's emergency protocol meeting at Adam's house again guys in a couple weeks Adam when did we say that was brother November November 5th right Once again, at November 5th, that's a couple weeks away. No phone.
too many thoughts. Preparedness is always practical. Even if we're not uh, considering, you know, potential emergency events, you know, a lot of people kind of tend to foo-foo away or, or make it seem silly to be prepared, but everybody actually is more prepared than they realize in so many different ways. Do you have a, a phone charger in your car? Well, then you're prepared for the time where you're going to need to charge your phone in your car. Do you carry aspirin or uh, ibuprofen in your purse or keep some in your truck or your car? Well, then you're prepared for the time you're going to have a headache. So many people um, don't realize that preparedness is something you're already doing in so many ways. It's just a good idea to escalate that to the next level of preparedness. And when you think about it, just think about, again, even when we consider all these emergencies, how many emergencies have you had in your life? Well, you say, well, what constitutes an emergency? Well, we could talk here in Florida about a hurricane, or we could talk about a time where you, you were out of work for a couple of weeks, or you didn't have a job for a time period. If you had some food set up, well, hey, at least you had food. Maybe you didn't have the money to pay those bill things. You didn't have to worry about starving and dying. And when you take one little uh, worry, one concern off the table, okay, I have food. I don't have to be concerned about that then you can focus and be calm in the chaos like Pastor Davis talked about. And it's just such a practical thing for everyday life anyhow um, that to store up a little extra should just be, uh, uh, oh yeah, that makes sense. I'll limit my comments to that. Who will be the first to, to share uh, a praise uh, or a testimony about how God's answered prayer or what he's doing in your life this week? Andy. Tomorrow they sign and get the keys on a place that they can call their dwelling place. Praise the Lord for that, for sure. Amen. I know it's been a long time and a lot of prayer making those decisions. And we prayed uh, last Wednesday night as well that if it was God's will that he would open the doors. And he's opened the doors. So praise the Lord for that. Anybody else this afternoon or this evening? Joyce. Okay. Say visitation is tomorrow and the funeral will be Saturday. The funeral will be Friday. Okay, Friday. So we have been praying for Grace. Grace is a young lady who uh, was intended to be married on Saturday, um, but the Lord has taken her home. Um, so she will be. They'll be having the the funeral on Friday. Um, so pray for the family. Pray for the fiance, um, and just pray for for God uh, to give grace um, to those who are around Grace. Uh, Andy. So pray for Andy's friend from college, Emily. Um, she is not doing very well. We don't quite know exactly why, um, but pray that the Lord will help her. Becca. Who isn't struggling? <laughs> oh, wow. Sure, yeah. So pray for uh, Becca's coworker, Elizabeth. Um, essentially, she has to be able to pass a test or she's not going to be able to have a job next year. Um, I think those of us who have experience in an area understand that. Like, I know how to do this job. Your test is not relevant to me. But unfortunately, um, to some people, the test is relevant. So pray for Elizabeth. Joyce.
Huh. So pray for Joyce's sister, Cheryl, and her son, Ryan, have COVID. And then you said your brother as well? Her, her brother, Randy, as well has COVID. So pray for uh, Elisa Swanson. Um, her son died, um, and he had a congenital heart um, problem. Just pray again for her. Okay. Wow, okay. Um, Logan. So pray for Logan, um, a friend um, from school um, and the school family down there and church family. Um, she committed suicide. Um, so just pray for, for the family and for the church and for the school um, as they deal with all of that and process all of that. Um, and the funeral will be on Tuesday. Pastor Davis. So, right, yeah, yeah, uh, Andy. This is Brent's dad, right? So, yeah, so pray for Mike uh, Gellis, uh, Brent's dad. Um, nine months ago was his wife's funeral, um, and he's having a rough day today, and uh, I'm sure he'll have a rough day again in the future. Pastor. sure so uh, set that time aside in your calendar or a revival with ben um, but pray for for yourself for your family and pray for ben miss teresa
So pray for Miss Teresa's former housekeeper's family. Um, she passed away, um, and her son was coming to see her, but was 15 minutes late um, to making her passing. She has some daughters as well. Elisa? Danny and Ruby are sick tonight, so pray for a speedy recovery for them. Uh, Miss Teresa? Okay. So pray for uh, her youngest son, Michael's girlfriend. Um, she has a case of COVID pneumonia, um, which is obviously not uh, great. Lou. So pray for uh, Lou's uh, friend from college. His father passed away. Uh, viewing will be on Friday, funeral Saturday. But pray that uh, as those things happen, that the word goes forth um, and God does uh, the best that he can do out of a death, and that's lead people to himself. Miss Diane? So pray for uh, Miss Diane's best friend. Um, she was on vacation in uh, North Carolina, found out that she had COVID. Judy. And she is uh, hopefully being able to be transported from North Carolina by a friend um, to New Jersey. And she also has a complication there with AFib. Um, so pray for Judy. Miss Teresa. Yeah. Sometime in December. So pray for Erica. We had talked about her on Sunday. She uh, fell off the steps climbing into the house and hurt her ankle, but also hurt her back the next day. She's not going to be able to see doctors until December. Um, so pray for Erica. Um, Ron? Yes. Wow. So we had prayed that Ron would be able to get some garage doors the next day. That did not work out. Um, so the next closest date to the next day, which would have been Thursday of last week, is February 11th. Um, so pray that the Lord works, works that out for him as well. Josh? Awesome. So praise the Lord for, for Andy getting a job and for that job and Josh and, and it all working out well. With that, uh, let's break up for prayer. Try and be a little bit mindful of the time as we are heading pretty late.